Hey there everybody, Joe here. Thanks for tuning in again. Now, I'm to a, a point in my mural where I'm really just wanting to see the white space disappear. So I'm not going to uh, bong myself down with a bunch of detail and worrying about painting exact shapes on a scale that's this big. You know, I'll be here forever. So what I'm going to do is put a bunch of green because I want foliage and then I want some earth under it with some shadows. All right, so I'm not thinking about I want a leaf here, I want a, a rock there, I want, you know, the exact placement of any of these things. I'm just putting splotches of color and making sure I keep separate separate shapes. Here, let's do a, a bunch of this. I don't know what to put in here. Let's see. I want a tree right here. I had a big old pine. Refresh my memory. I had a bunch of pine branches coming out here, so definitely won't spend a whole ton of time. You know, I think what would what would be cool is if those pine branches were coming out over this a little bit, you know, make a layer that goes back in this trunk. I'll put it behind this instead of in front of it. So we'll put, put this rock coming down with the red and yellow. just sharpen up the shape and slim it out a little bit. I think this will look better if it's just a little bit slimmer at the base. Let's put this rock coming across. Is it just pure white? Let's just put some light on this rock. Let's see if it's too red. Uh, green, I just add red. Then vice versa. It doesn't work so good when you're trying to work with, like, trying to make a true colorless gray, but when you're using real, real, uh, earthy tones like this, they're more brownish grays. Green and red are kind of your opposite dials. You, you uh, add them to get rid of each other. I'm just messing with the shape of this rock. I, I don't even have a plan or know what I'm doing. I'm just, just going with the flow, man. Let's put a ledge right here. See, same thing as I, I did with the leaves. I'm just finding that lower part of these lighter shapes that are in here and putting more white on that lower part. Now I'm just getting rid of little spots that have the pure white. Make the color a little bit more softly blended. Anything that doesn't look natural, you know, I'll just come over to it. That doesn't look natural. What's that? You know, just, just get rid of it. <laughs> I'm not trying to not trying to make anything specific, more of trying to unmake the Things that I don't like. I 
all right I like the way that looks for now and this will be a pine tree in here so we'll have that trunk starting start right about here and then we'll put some some pine needles coming out over this tree so I don't think this pine can go straight out of a rock I better put a little bit of shadow in there Although I have seen trees push apart some amazing, amazingly large stones. I mean, it's really, it's really a lesson at life when you see what gradual perseverance can accomplish. You know, soft tree roots just ever so slightly pushing away, gradually pushing huge boulders out of the way as they grow. This will be some little bit of ground showing here. And then this is the side of that tree trunk. Put a little bit of a highlight on that thing. This is just going to get painted over. I just want to kind of identify where it is. Make just an impression of some tree bark. I do frequently use this sideways brush stroke pattern to make tree bark. Came out pretty all right, didn't it? There, we'll keep it. We'll keep it blurry for now. All right, and then this has got, you know, who knows, maybe a bunch of, uh, maybe a bunch of that green going over the top of this dirt that this tree is going out of. I could put roots. It'd be fun to put roots in there. <clears throat> Make them, I don't know how to, I don't know how I would do that. Let's try it. Whoa, that's a lot of black. Let's just, let's put the red and yellow on there for a brown. Get this black. There, now I have kind of a woody color. Ooh, I like that black. I love black. Deep, mysterious shadows. Put a tree root coming right over here, just then maybe down. that again. Well, 
let that dry a little bit before I mess with it. Now let's highlight this area. This is, you know, the ground under the tree root. Let's just bring it up, just like I did with the leaves, leave some dark color for a shadow. some black, putting it here. That blue wasn't going to be in there, that just was just there because I changed my plan. This could be a big old rock right here. See, this is wrapping around it. Just, let's make a big flat edge. Maybe this will look like a crack in the rock. Put this. I like the way this is looking. Here, let's go. Let's put a big crack right here. See if I just blend into this black. I had to make sure I'm working on camera here. Oh, you know what would be cool? Hang on. Let's put a let's put a bright highlight right here. Then we'll put a tree root going right into that crack here. Now let's mix our color here. Get my red and yellow mix on that tree trunk. It's not detailed out or anything. There's nothing to lose really. We'll get some color on there and then we'll see so you can be led to believe looking at paintings that that it's in the accuracy of the details that makes something look look uh, like it's really there, you know. But it's really in just how you light the shape. You know, I don't need a whole lot of details to make these shapes look like they're touchable, you know. I just gotta 
be mindful of how I color them. See, I'll be careful not to bring that white too far down in there. And we'll soften it. this dark color and put it right in here. Probably don't want to spend too much time on this because I'm going to want to put some some real rough bark texture over the top to make it more like a an actual aspen tree down here at the base. They don't have that smooth bark, but not that I care about what they really have so much, but it looks cool. I want it in my picture. Put another root going down here. You know what? This blue right here is going to be handy right over here. Isn't that funny how huh? wearing glasses makes you wrinkle your nose every time you look up? Anyone that wears glasses knows what I'm talking about. You do that, get them up high enough that you can see through the lenses when you're looking up. <laughs> it's that nerd look. I always kind of like to get every layer to be to be as like if I wanted to leave it as a more simple piece of art than what I'm going for that I could you know I just try to make everything have a, a little bit of a finished look to it. that's why I'm redoing this because it helps me to keep my my vision for the picture you know not getting too far off. Easier said than done, huh? That was real heavy paint right there. Just this here too, you can see it dripping, sagging down. This is where it's handy to do that. Real quick blend thing. Just getting some deep shadow so it looks like this 
rock is receding down into there. Let's kind of go with the shape that's already there. to find that crack. Okay, okay, it's not time for details. Let's get out of there. <clears throat> Just a quick little swipe to... Sometimes that paint will, you know, drip on me. And even though it's not a big deal, it annoys me when I see it. So. Let's give it some of that. Looks like that could use a little bit more highlight on it. All right, how about some of those some of those leaves in here. Let's do yellow and blue and white. And let's get some let's get some of these in place. Need a little more of that blue there. Maybe I didn't need the white. And so this, this is more shadow down here, so I don't really need as much as those, as much of those highlights. <laughs> a little bit of water out of my water cup and then we'll bring a few leaves across this.
Okay, let's put a, this is a really bright root right there, so it's not natural looking. Rather than trying to fix it, I'll just paint something else over it. some little highlights in there. Hmm, I like the way those look. See here, I'll just try to just blend that little edge. Well, that didn't work so good. I like that leaf, so let's try to save it. Here we go. Just put black underneath the white. Okay, now up in here in this top left corner, a good trick to use is to just put all the paint I'm going to need on the wall. So I know that, see I'm bending way down here to the floor to get my paint, so I want to do that as few times as possible. I always tell people too when they're uh, practicing blending fast drying paints, put it on first, don't, don't work it and smear it until it's on. Even though this is mostly covered down here, I still feel like it would look better if the angle sloped down to the right like the rest of it. So Now next week, I'm going to see if I can do a better job on those pine needles, but on a real big one. I'm going to do that big pine tree that I want to come in front of that, that swoop, swooping aspen trunk over there. I'm going to put a, a spruce kind of a pine tree in front of that thing. I really like the way those have the branches that come out in layers. Pretty trees. There's not many trees I don't think are pretty actually. All right, I like these bright bright uh, tones in here making it making it really come to life. Looks like light striking that rock now. Mm, man, I'm starting to feel excited about the, about the finished product. Okay, I'm looking at last week's comments, and I feel bad. Uh, Van Arke is, is saying, sorry, I didn't mean to pick at your work. <laughs> I know, I, you know, I, I make a big deal and I pretend to be upset because it's humorous to me, you know. But um, believe me, I don't put my heart and soul into the final outcome of the paintings, and I, I love to hear the criticism, feedback, you name it. Jennifer Perez says, I've been watching for some time, but have never commented. I watched last night your video on the stormy ocean scene with the monster being zapped by thunder. Effing epically awesome. I loved how the music dropped at the end. Please, could you mention what song that is? Okay, a, a lot of those videos, especially in the more recent videos, it's hard for me to edit uh, my own music. I used to make my own music. And those are probably the more annoying videos to watch for that reason, but I think that was just a loop that was created especially for this purpose uh, to be sold. You know, we pay like 20 bucks to buy the rights to use it in videos, and I think I found it on SoundCloud, uh, one of those sites. You know, you just type in 
uh, dramatic orchestra, wh whatever kind of thing that you're imagining in, in uh, you get to listen to all kinds of different songs by keywords. It's a really cool way to find soundtracks for videos. So I'm really glad you like it. I thought it was cool too. That's why I picked it. And thank you for finally commenting. And thank you for the nice compliment too. I appreciate that. Patricia Orozco says, Gracias. Please explain how do you know where to place the shadows? Shadow placement is directly related to where the light is coming from. So on this, I'm it, to make the answer simple, I'm just imagining where the light is coming from and putting the shadow on the opposite side, the opposite side of the object as the light source. Now, I know that that gets tricky when you're talking about, you know, wrapping tree branch shadows around tree trunks, those kinds of things I do because I'm familiar with what happens to those shapes. Like, let's say you have, uh, like in this picture, you know, a branch coming straight off of a tree, but the trunk is this way and then the sun's coming this way. Well, so to know what that shadow does against the tree trunk, it makes this diagonal line. I mean, I've learned those things from just going out and studying, but uh, you, you start to become familiar with the repeating patterns. And so just by, uh, I think I just really pay a lot of attention in everyday life to what shadow I'm seeing and I'm just looking at it. You know, someone's trying to get my attention to talk about something normal. And I'm thinking that shadow looks like this and the light's right there and I'm, I'm just taking it all in. So it's just imagining the three dimensional uh, world. Foxy Girl Gamer says, I would love to meet you. You are my idol from London, England. So thank you very much for that nice compliment and the shout out from London. Please don't think of me as an idol. Think of me as nothing more than your equal and I'm honored that you take the time to watch my videos. Uh, it's just the work that I love doing and I spend a ton of time doing it. It makes me feel like I'm gonna get struck by lightning when I read compliments that I think are far beyond what I deserve. Katrina Zeddy mentions, this is awesome and so educative, thank you very much. But I'm so confused as to how you got the greenish color on the little river without using blue. And Paul Locke, thank you for answering that. That's true. When you mix black with yellow, it does do uh, the same thing that a blue does in, in uh, allowing the green to show from the yellow. So, you know, I don't mean to get too scientific, but it filters out the red light. Uh, and leaves the green showing. That's what happens when you mix real dark colors with the yellow. But um, I just want to mention also that uh, I use black as, I, I do just what Paula said, I use black as my third primary sometimes if I'm doing very muted, uh, okay, like when I'm doing the rocks, right? You see me do a lot of, of red, yellow, black, and white. Well. I am using the black to serve a similar purpose that a blue would, just knowing that there's not going to be any any color in that scheme that's anything close to primary blue, so I can just use a black that's already, like, uh, uh, it has, has really no blue but functions like a blue, so that I, I mean, it's, you know, I'm just saying that the, that's, that's true. You can kind of have your three primaries, red, yellow, and black sometimes if you don't need lots of blues in your scene. Daniela Aro, Ar Arojo says, you should do some time lapses on your channel too. You're an amazing artist and inspiration. Can't wait to see the end result. Thank you very much for that compliment. You know, it's funny. I, I used to do so many time lapses and there are many time lapses on my channel. I think if you look up how to do anything, how to paint clouds, how to paint water, you'll see a lot of time-lapse videos come up. Ironically, the ones titled how-to tend to have all the time-lapse. Well, <laughs> the, the videos that I didn't put how-to on are the things that are done in real time. You know, you live and you learn. I, I, in, in the end, a lot more people were interested in uh, higher quality instruction in real time when, when it comes to the how-to. So, you know, I'm, I'm trying to improve as we go, but uh, that's funny, you know, I, I started posting more real time and <laughs> this is the first comment that I'm seeing saying, how about some time lapse? I do want to just say thank you, Daniela. That's, that's very nice of you. Chris Jenner says, you didn't continue the, the dark tree on the other side of the tree trunk up there. <laughs> uh, yeah, 
it does look funny like that, doesn't it? I didn't do a very good job on that tree, and I was just trying to, you know, get my head wrapped around a better technique before I, you know, go any further with something that I'm not really loving the look of. But uh, I definitely need to need to finish that up. Brandon Grubbs says, "Good day, Mr. Joe. When will you be having your next workshop?" Thank you for bringing that up. I do host workshops from time to time. I've done so far one. To, I mean, I think I've only done like three workshops total. Have I done four? I don't know. It's just a difficult thing for me to uh, set aside the time and schedule it and then also do all the other things that keep me busy. But I do love uh, doing workshops. So if you get on my mailing list, if you go to my site, uh, learn.muraljoe.com or just muraljoe.com, there's links there to get on my mailing list and I always try to do a good job of letting you know when I'm thinking of having another workshop. I'm realizing as I'm speaking that I don't do a good job. I need to do a better job. I will try. I want to do more for sure. Ergo Proxy says, Hello Joe, greetings from Belgrade, Serbia. Wow, cool. I don't, I, I mean, I honestly, I hate to sound dumb, but I didn't even know that existed. I have heard of Serbia. I had a friend from Serbia. My friend uh, Miroslav. I actually mentioned him before on another Q&A. I've learned a lot from you when it comes to painting water and waves. Your videos are the best I've found regarding that topic. I'm a painter myself and can't wait to see how you'll paint a space theme. Oh, I gotta do that, don't I? I just love doing space theme paintings. Keep up the good work. You're awesome. <laughs> Thank you for that nice encouragement. I appreciate that a lot. And I'll definitely keep that in mind. I've had a lot of requests for that space theme. I, I just need to get to it. So, so uh, I'm hurrying to get other things done so I can do that. I'm going to stop right there. I really appreciate you guys tuning in and watching my video again. I'll look forward to seeing you next week. I can hear my baby crying in the next room, so I got to go grab him. So I'll see you later for now.